Welcome to Revlog. Here we are, Here. Sans Chris, the pastor. We frankly don't know where Pastor is, <laughs> but we're going to soldier on and do our very best. We're believing that he's doing the Lord's work wherever it may be. Only Chris knows. Only Chris knows where Chris is. Well, so here we are. We're ending chapter two of First Peter, um, eighteen to twenty-five, mm -hmm. um, talking about enduring some hardships. And this takes a serious, serious turn yeah. for these next couple of weeks, Aaron. Indeed, there's some some tall weeds to walk through for for certain as yeah. as we go. I continue to marvel of of Peter's knowledge of Scripture. Yeah. I mean, it you know Isaiah is woven throughout here. The Psalms yeah. are woven throughout here. I mean. Talk about having good source material. I mean, as as Peter preaches, <laughs> yeah. you you know that it is well researched. It is well. Uh, it's not just some flippant. Oh, I think this. That's it's, right. He's saying, you know, don't you remember when it was said this? So, and and not to mention uh, his uh, his membership in the original band. <laughs> I mean, it, this this is also his own history. You know, is do you think he was the drummer? Is big. <laughs> was he the bass player? I don't. I don't know. That's in a commentary that I haven't read yet. But but yeah, thanks for that image. All right, so he, he played guitar. Yeah. Now I don't know if you know this, but yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Tell us <laughs> what your thoughts are. First Peter two eighteen to twenty five. Yeah, um, you know it says servants, but let's let's not fool ourselves. Uh, we're talking about slaves here. I mean, we, we are. And um, I, I I just want to say that it's easy to armchair this thing and to say to use this to say, well, um, people who are in forced servitude or who have no voice or who who are completely socially powerless um, just go along to get along mm. because Jesus was peaceful also and he did not uh, attempt to stop any violence done to him but I would say that um, Peter in in using Christ's uh, redemptive work as a parallel he does something very dangerous Jesus endured insult and bodily harm, um, but that was only the beginning of God's freeing work. And so I, I think it's fair to say that just as Jesus uh, provided space to, to, uh, to let the suffering happen, um, and he did not buck that system, um, it was only the beginning of, of God's work. God uh, did a, a great freeing work. He defeated death as he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And, of course, Jesus was involved in that uh, as well as the one being resurrected. And I think that uh, in the, that same light, if Peter says to slaves, and again, whether that be in our day, whether that be people who are in forced servitude, which absolutely exists in the world. Uh, you think of sex trafficking, you, th you think of, of slaves, uh, societies that have institutional slavery uh, this day and time in the world, or people that are completely marginalized without a voice. Uh, as Peter is saying to them, uh, don't burn the whole thing down. Mm. Um, give... If you are in Christ, you give place to God so that he can order your thoughts and then act with him. He's not saying don't act. He's saying uh, give, give yourself the space to get ordered so that you're just not wildly flailing against the system because you could bring something that will burn everything down. Right. Um, if slaves had, if Christianity had encouraged slaves to rise up in mass, the Roman Empire may well have uh, descended uh, on that with a wrath that would have plunged the entire known world into a greater darkness than it had ever known. Um, but as it was, he encouraged them to work within that system. But but at, at a later time, gradually. Um, the, they had the space to think 
they had the spiritual fortitude to rise up and say, this is not of God, and we are going to, and it, and it took a, a long time, but sometimes that's how, uh, that's how minds change and hearts change is over a period of time. Well, the weeds you're walking in are much taller than the weeds. Okay, that, that well, I, I, I mean, I just, I, I want to say that it, it is just, we glibly say, you know, give it time, it's going to be fine. But, but what I think what Peter is saying here is, no, you, God's going to act and you are going to be a part of that. Yeah. You are going to be a part of that, but you've got to have the space to let God, to, to, to let God form your mind to be able to, to think, to plan, to acknowledge uh, the resources that you have in order to change a system that is unjust. And, and to be clear, and I, I, don't, I think this goes without saying, that, that we're not saying that Peter said the institution was good or that then we are clearly not saying the institution itself is good, it, 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 but, but that Peter is speaking where they were. That's right. And well, he, in, in his parallel with Christ's suffering, he says, uh, he acknowledges that there is there's injustice. Yeah. There yeah. is wrong that is being done. And I think I, I took this not I, I took this word servants because it needs to speak to us too. That the, who, right. who are That's not right. in that kind of, of of life. And I appreciate that you that you acknowledge that there is still that kind of injustice happening, uh, and that is it's it's disheartening and and really sickening to to think about. It but is. but all of us are in bondage somewhere. All of us are struggling yeah, at true. at some level. And and. I think my own sense of, of justice, and I felt this a lot as I've read f First Peter, is to say when something bad happens to me, I just want to cry out and go, "Unjust, unjust! Look at me, look at me!" and tell everybody, you know, "Look how I'm suffering." You know, isn't it good that I'm suffering? And and Peter's just saying, you, you really just need to keep your mouth shut, and mm -hmm. and you really just need to to acknowledge acknowledge in your heart and to the Lord what's happening. But it's not going to do you any good to just to kind of just flail and 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 by the way if you if you want to call attention to your suffering that doesn't mean you're not suffering truly indeed by the way. yeah indeed you know. and it's but he reminds us of, of of christ in 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 the midst of it and the way he suffered yeah and the and, way christ suffered and that again that he saw the cross. He saw through the cross, mm -hmm. and and we, as we look to Jesus as our example, we need to go. Where is this suffering leading me? Yeah. And if this suffering is is truly leading me somewhere, then then I then that that should help me take that next step. That should help get my head up just a little bit to know that that this isn't the end. That that there is a next. Yeah, um, it's the beginning, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Um, the the. I think Peter uh, is saying here. He, he's he he is always and not always. He is he has often been interpreted as saying, uh, you know, be calm and don't make any waves like Christ didn't make any waves. The resurrection was a wave. Yeah, right. So uh, he went through that suffering. Because the fight was just beginning, and the fight ended in his resurrection. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate what you just said there, because you can sanitize, you can look at that and just go, you know, just endure. Yeah, you know, right. let's let's you know be demure. Just endure. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, and that's not exactly what we're saying here at all. <laughs> it's that, not. It's the opposite. And I appreciate that you, also that you said that. Um, injustice happens. Yeah. In 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 your life, in my life, in the world. Yeah. Um, and that. Often we will suffer for it, and at different levels and at different times. But but rubbing up against, and again, Peter, in his very logical and very grounded approach, he's saying, "Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, right. the Author and Perfecter mm -hmm. of our faith, mm -hmm. who for the joy set before Him endured mm -hmm. the cross." Yes. And that joy was the resurrection and the hope that we are now given because of it. I am glad you use that word "grounded." That is the grounding of our suffering. Yeah. Our, it, Suffering that is grounded has much more power to overturn injustice than suffering that is flailing. Yeah. So, like you said, we are, we are in for the next couple of weeks of some some real. Peter is is, is 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 giving us a lot to think about mm -hmm. and and consider. Um, I, I I asked a couple of questions, but but what are some of the maybe some questions you might have? Of uh, this my text? question is whether I'm suffering or I'm seeing others suffer. Um, what uh, 
what is the further work of this? This is yeah. the beginning. What is the further work? Just like Jesus' suffering was the beginning of his work of resurrection. And, I, and mine was going to be very similar. Am I willing to be taught? Am I, am, am I willing to learn a lesson in this or am I just going to complain? Mm, uh, yeah. So, so that's, uh, there, there's much to grow through all of this. If we really are in the sanctification business, we have room to grow. That's right. Uh, absolutely. Well, um, hopefully you'll find Pastor Chris um, soon. Uh, we, we certainly always miss him. But uh, thank you for tuning in. Comment below on where you think Pastor is and uh, <laughs> we'll see you later. 